Have you seen people with swollen legs and they tell you they don't know what is happening to them? Have you seen people that get easily tired? They tell you they don't know what is happening to them? Have you seen people telling you, I find it difficult to sleep? And even when I sleep, it seems as if I'm choking. Come on, something is going and going wrong in their lives that is bound to take them any moment if nothing is done. One thing that happens most commonly to people that have diabetes, to people that have hypertension, has to do with the involvement of what is called heart failure. When BP is not controlled, over the time, you may have done a test and they tell you, no, the, your heart is enlarged. Perhaps you did an X-ray, you say your heart is enlarged. Heart enlargement does not connote that your heart is diseased. No. In a number of occasions, it could be something compensatory. Compensatory in the sense that if you do muscle exercise over time, your bicep will enlarge. It doesn't mean that it's damaged. So, when the heart is receiving pressure, Definitely, he tried to compensate that pressure by that minimal enlargement. However, if that is not abated and the condition continues, the muscle will stretch and stretch to the point it won't continue again. And at that point, it will become very weak. And being weak means that it can't pump out enough blood that is due for the entire body to be able to survive and be able to be strong. And that's why you see something so practical. I will show you. You see your loved ones, you see people around you. So when they tell you it's an attack, you will understand where that attack is coming from and advise them rightly. And advise them rightly. Now, look at it. The heart pumps our blood, all right? And when it pumps our blood, there's what is called ejection fraction. If you do echo, you will be able to tell you the quantity of blood is expected at least 60% of the blood that comes in that the capability of the heart should be able to pump it. And on that occasion, when the heart becomes weak and is not able to pump out this very blood, you know what will happen? It will pump a little. The kidney has to access the amount of water in the body to regulate it. When he says that the quantity coming out is not that much, you know what he will assume? He will assume that, that the body is in a state of dehydration or a desert situation. And what will happen? Instead of making the person to start urinating, he will retain the water. Now, don't forget that it's not because that there was no water, it's because the heart couldn't pump. So he will pack the water again back to the heart with a heart that is already weak. It will pump a little equal, the kidney will as well, on assumption of that, retain it also. Over the time, that particular heart will be suffocated. The body system will now start floating on top of water. And this is one of the things that you can notice. This person will tell you that he discovered that the leg is start getting swollen, which could be a problem of the heart, it could also be a problem of the kidney, apart from other possible causes. It will say my legs are beginning to sweat. But so significantly, there's what is called easy fatigability. Don't mind about the big grammar. What that actually connotes is that this very person that used to be quite active, very, very active, you see the person with climb staircase, he will just be, be panting as if, ah, ah, they didn't run a marathon, no. The heart can carry the pressure at that time. You see the person? Yes, please, what is going on? You see, he's stressed. And Joffy, Joffy said, come on. It is not stressed. You are dying. Their heart is not capable of carrying the body. That's what he's actually telling you. Don't go and say that somebody is, is tormenting me, somebody is after me. No. There's another thing that happened. These people can't sleep. The reason why they can't sleep, I will tell you. If they lie down, it will be as if he's choking, as if he couldn't breathe well. So he had to most times have to sit down or support himself with a number of pillows. When that thing is happening, friend, check your heart. Something is going wrong. 
Don't leave your family untimely. Don't. Something is going wrong at that point. You are having what is called congestive heart failure, most probably. Other things can still be sought out. All right? Then he will not do the one that is looking spiritual. The one that we look as if is a spiritual attack, which many people assume. Whereby you find that a scenario where this person can sleep in the night, but late into the night when he deep asleep, he will wake up suddenly and, and start breathing fast or looking for where to get fresh air. And you know what? I have a friend, the dad came in one occasion and told me, hey, Doc, I knew that in my own case, that particular uh, demons, those spirits, used to come around 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. You, you get to understand that right now. 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. And he used to get up and start panting. And then say, Daddy, hold on, hold on, hold on. That thing is not demon. You see, I know. He said, no. The actual thing, the issue is that because of the understanding that that demon come at that time, what he did is that he will sleep early, around 1 a.m. he will carry chair and sat down and be looking forward to those demons and say that is not no demon is after you. This is what is medically called paradoxical nocturnal dyspnea. This situation, read the grammar and look at it here. This is a condition that is typified by this diagram. I will show you. You know, if I happen to have such a fluid in my body, and while I'm standing, by reason of gravity, this very fluid is bound to go down to my legs, all right? So I can have swollen feet, no issues about that. However, think about when I'm lying down like this. He discovered that those fluid that used to be down there by gravity will now have to flow this way, all right? And by reason of that fluid flowing, he discovered that the fluid will flow and start filling the lungs. Gradually filling this long. Don't forget that this fellow is sleeping. But see what happened. Why is it that this person will be receiving water in the lungs, yet it's not reacting? When you are sleeping, you know, when you have this kind of choking effect, you're supposed to get up and start breathing very fast under this kind of thing, like somebody who is drunk, all right? But because when you are sleeping, what you call anxiety agents, called catechola means, they're supposed to trigger reaction, but because you are sleeping, they will be calm. And because when you are sleeping, the respiratory center in the brain will also not react. So the person can be deep until the water will flow and flow to a point where it will be as if it's drowning. You will just, you will just wake up and not have to go and rush out. You may sit by the bedside, see if you can breathe well, and then you will move down to the window sometimes to get really, really fresh air. However, watch what happened. Within five minutes of standing, that water that was there may start going down. So when it start going down, within five minutes, it start breathing well again. He say, is that attack that came in that happened? But permit me to tell you, that particular condition is a product of heart failure, which when also ignored, could be able to make the, the kidney also to be in position to be suffocated. Now, in that particular case, what do you do to be able to get yourself back again, particularly when it's difficult for you to cope with life? Listen to Chris' experience. My name is Chief Christian Wami. I had a heart problem. I was diagnosed of uh, heart failure. When I had this heart problem, I cannot even walk freely because I couldn't breathe well. I cannot go one staircase, one story building without support. Every time I am tired and I need a solution for it, I went for an ECG. I was told I will undergo angiogram. If there is blockage, we perform a stent. We did that, I discovered that uh, my heart has already failed. We did the surgery a week after the angiogram. I couldn't believe it. It went smoothly. I was seeing everything that was being done. The funniest part of it is that after the procedure, I walked from the theater to my room, the fifth floor. 
I was asked to eat whatever I want to eat because I was hungry. There was no restrictions. Now I have a pacemaker on me that enables me to breathe well. I do everything freely. I was surprised that I can walk down the stairs of uh, Save a Life and I walk up fifth floor. It wasn't like I did anything. My body is now very strong. I've come to also realize that there is no need traveling abroad. High cost of the exchange rate, buying ticket, when it's more affordable here in uh, Nigeria. My advice to people out there is, whatever you do, if you see symptom, tiredness, not breathing well, every little thing you do, you can't bend them properly. Go and check yourself. Go for an ECG. It is very important in order to know the status of your heart. I'm a living witness. Of course, you can agree with me that he may be among the few that are living today. The rest have been left and died. And we are saying, you may not need to come to this level. If you are hypertensive, please take care of it. If you are diabetic, take care of it. May nobody deceive you because that you are hypertensive, diabetic doesn't mean you are dying. It can be well regulated. But in a situation there is a heart problem we discussed last time, that when there be a heart-related issue that may be bradycardia, that this person will need a pacemaker. Like in the case right now of heart failure, this very person, in fact, in one occasion, he fainted and was off before he was able to get this done. And this can be done excellently in Nigeria. Wherever there is this cat lab, intervention cardiologist or biomedical engineer, once this is available, this thing can be done. And this person can be back again to life being there for the family. In this very case, this person required what is called biventricular pacemaker, biventricular pacemaker, what is called cardiac resynchronization therapy. That could be done and these people can be back again. However, do not wait to come to this point. But no matter the situation, whatever be the cause cannot be compared to barrier and the hopelessness the family will be left when their parents are not there. Now, do you know what you just owe somebody just to live in just knowledge? Some people have been told, this is an attack, this is a demon, my enemy is after me, I'm moving from one place to another. Can we stop them through the power of knowledge, give them the ration? Just give them one tablet by sharing this very video now and telling you, you have saved that life. You have aborted barrier aborted frustration of his family, and also aborted unnecessary barrier rights we are all running up and down. Please, let's do this together and build a healthy society. God bless you. I remain your friend, Dr. Richard Okoye.